Welcome back to my animal education series. So today we are going to redesign my leopard gecko violet's enclosure. So we got violet's old enclosure, the 20 gallon lawn, and I believe our 55 gallon for uh, Aquaman, our collar lizard. We got those second hand from some guy who just didn't want them anymore, so he just left them in his yard. So we got both those tanks for free. But violet's 20 gallon lawn was an old aquarium, so half of the glass on this side of the tank was gone. So we used coated mesh. If you're going to use mesh with the animals, make sure it's coated so that the animal doesn't hurt themselves. But we used coated mesh to cover the side, and it's worked great. But then recently she found her way out of the enclosure. We don't know if it's because there's a gap in the mesh that she was able to push. We let, left the lid off. But we decided to use that as an excuse to get a new tank, one that has a full side. So today we're going to... Her, her enclosure is a bit of a mess because we just took a bunch of the excavator clay got it re-wet and we're going to use that in here because always reuse what you can and excavator clay is really good with that you can just get it wet and you can remold it however you want so we have some bottles in here that we're going to put the clay around like with these we can easily just cut these and take the bottles out so that the animal doesn't have to deal with them like these soda bottles like these I believe these are coke bottles like these work great because you can just coat it around this and then just cut the bottle in half and then slide it right out and my hands already kind of dirty because I was mixing around for a little bit, getting those chunks broken up. So I'm just going to go ahead and start putting them in here on either side. My plan thus far is we're going to make the side facing you guys right now, the back of the tank. And we're going to fill each bottle up on the sides like this. Because I don't know how well you can see over here. But for ease of access, in case we need to get her out, the wet hide or like the humid hide has a rock sitting on top of it. So we just pick the rock up and we can get her. So we don't have any like permanent... Uh, cover on it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to have another rock covered cave and then over here we have two kind of little tunnels and we're going to cover both of those today. So let me go ahead and get started on that. There's still a little bit of chunking in here but that's fine. Bigger chunks like this I'm going to have to go ahead and break part after this. But let's go ahead Oop, I think I have a bigger handful. So get this, put that right in there, make sure to tuck it in. We're also going to make a wall on this side of the enclosure. Kind of like a, like a little cliff dwelling in a way. We have the same thing in our collar lizards, collared lizards enclosure. We have a nice big wall in the back there that he loves to run back and forth on. So, I wasn't paying attention, and I went a little bit too far on here. So basically, it turns into like a really hard kind of like cement, for lack of a better word. So once this dries, if I left it like that, it makes the entrance to the cave too narrow, and I would have never been able to get that bottle out. And then it just would have been stuck in there, and we would have had to shove the moss for the human hide in there. So... I don't want it to go any uh, further than that, which is the widest part of the bottle. I'm going to scoot some of this stuff out here. So I don't want it up against the front of the glass. I put way too much over here, but we can make it work. Shove that back in there. And this stuff, if you put it too thin, as I said before, it will kind of dry up and crack and fall apart. So you want to make sure you get all your levels nice and thick. So this excavator clay is one thing I really liked uh, using because it's relatively inexpensive. It's about 20 bucks for like a five pound bag, I believe it is. Mostly my dad buys it, not me. But um, it's really good to use because you can just get in here with your hands or if you don't like getting your hands dirty, you can use some sort of utensil and pack it all in and make the exact design you want. Because sometimes you go to the pet stores and you see like the, all the decorations for the enclosures. You're like, 
you know what, I, would, I like that, but I don't necessarily want that in this style of enclosure. Or maybe it, like, it has some things that you want on it, but other things that you don't necessarily want in an enclosure, or sometimes it's too big. So with this excavator clay, you can kind of make whatever you want. Like with us here, we want to make our own caves that are big enough, but sometimes it, it's just too expensive to get some stores. So this is a better alternative for us. So on this side, I just need to put a lot more excavator clay so I can keep that bottle in there. And one thing this will also allow is by having it kind of like a little ramp. Um, the leopard gecko can go right up this little ramp on top of the cave if she wanted to bask it there for any reason. So I temporarily stole the rock out of Violet's current enclosure. So as I mentioned before, we're using this as the temporary or a kind of removable roof for the cave. So I'm going to take some excavator clay, just pack it up and under here. Because when we made her old cave, we kind of built it around the rock so that there's a perfect little, like, hmm, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a little perfect mold, I guess, of the rock in there so that it fit in perfectly so there's no space where like, light can get into the cave. So, I have some rocks here that I also stole out of her previous enclosure. I have no clue what kind of rocks these are, but I was going to put these softly into the clay here, and as the clay forms, or not forms, but hardens, this will harden in there. This adds a little bit more texture to the enclosure. This one's already covered in excavator clay, because you forgot about that one. That looks about right for now. So we're going to, go, going to go ahead and let this dry for about a day or so, and we'll catch you guys back when it dries. Alright, so we have let the excavator clay cure for a couple of days. So we went ahead and put some more rocks in here. We put a little bit of paw prints in there as if some other animals walking through there. Kind of makes it look more natural. And then on the big cave over here, since that orange juice bottle was kind of tall, we put this little log here to kind of lower the roof of the cave make it a bit darker and more comfy for her because without that log it was a bit exposed and she wouldn't have used it in the first place. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we have this kind of leftover excavator clay dried here on the glass and I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. On the bottom here it's not as much of a big deal because it's going to be covered by the substrate. And then we decided to go ahead and not just cover the entire back wall because one, that's going to take a lot of time and if you see over there, her cage is kind of bare bones and we don't like that. So we just want to hurry up the process a little bit more and get her in here. So I want to go ahead and do this. I might take out some of these smaller pieces here, but if it's small like that, it's not too big a deal. We already took out a lot of the big pieces that broke off. But I have some pieces of paper dowel down here. I'm going to just get water sprayed on there so I'm not spraying the rest of the excavator clay. And it just simply wipes off. So I'm going to go ahead over here, try to make this next part as fast as possible to make her not too uncomfortable. But I'm going to steal her rock, I need to move that over there, put that right there for right now, and then I'm also going to steal her little feeding dish that we put in there. It's always a good idea to have a feeding dish in your enclosure so that they don't accidentally inhale substrate. But then she was digging a little bit and put some in there anyway. So just clear a little bit of that out. Once I'm done with the setup here, I'll get a water, uh, some paper towels, and rinse it out and properly wash it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back in here. Just 
does not fit exactly well, but fits good enough for right now. So now that I actually moved the paper towels out of the way, you can actually see that I put the rock there. I moved the feeding bowl out for a little bit, and I'll let my previous take. We're using walnut shells as our substrate. Eventually we're going to mix in more sand and some organic topsoil into here so that it's not just all the same thing, it kind of gives it more of a better consistency. And by adding a little bit more of the topsoil, like she can dig around a little bit, and the sand and this will prevent that from clumping up. And you have to watch out when you do this because it's really dusty. I'm going to pour it all in here. Got a little bit on there, but it's not like it matters. She's going to track it everywhere anyway. So I'm going to move the rock as I'm breathing in all the dust, but that's fine. Scoot all into the cave. What I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to push some more up on like the face of the cave so that it looks a bit more hidden. Put that back in there, push this into these caves over here. Put it way, way too much on the side, but it's fine. I just kind of want to scoot around, make sure it's all even, and even if it's not even, it's not like it matters too much. But, do another bag here. Just put a little bit more on this side. That feels about right. Just spray it out. Later on, I might put a bit more, but as I add the other substrate, it's going to increase the volume of the, so, like the depthness of the substrate as well. Depthness? I don't think that's a word, but you get the idea. So I'm just going to kind of pat it down, move it around, brush it off of here, even though it kind of helps blend in this to the other textures of the environment. So I'm going to go grab her and then we're going to put her in. So here I have Violet and she walked herself into an awkward position where my hands are blocking her from the camera. I'm just going to go ahead and set her right down here. And I went ahead and I got some moss here. Got to once again remove the lid of her cave. And this help, helps keep the hide a little bit more damp and usually we don't need it, but she loves laying in it. And as soon as we put the moss into one of the hides in her previous setup, that's where she spent pretty much all of her time. Just gotta pack it down a little bit more. We're gonna take this, I'm gonna put it over here in the corner. That's like a, another little hide. I'm gonna kind of bury it down there. And I might take some more uh, walnut shell and kind of bury it a bit more in the corner. And it is pretty bare bones right now, but we're going to continue to add more substrate and more decor and more highs and stuff like that as we see fit areas that she's going to use and areas that she's not. I just spooked her a little bit with my shadow so then she goes hiding to the first dark place that she sees. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode and the little cage setup for my leopard gecko Violet. So as always, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Culture. As always, I'll see you next week.